the man's got to chapter 5, verse 18. For when I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass one jot or one title shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Be never Lord Jesus Christ. He said you from the book of Revelation chapter 17 verse 14. And they shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them. For he is the Lord of lords and the King of kings. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. This is now for Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. This is indeed to tell you that the words of God are the truth. And what you are now hearing symbolizes the covenant of God. And whatever is nominated in the scripture is fulfilling every day, day in, day out, because they are the words of God. It is in this premise, it is said, that any city devoid of a prophet, such a city is doomed. Because it is said, the heavens and the earth will pass away, will be folded up, but not a title, not a modicum of the pronouncement of God that shall ever pass away without all being made consonants. We are not being sustained, or our survival is not being made possible through the insinuations, the innuendos people pass, or as patients people cast at, I mean, God at all times. But we are being sustained through the words of God which He gives to us. For these words, day in, day out, sustain us. <laughs> Whoever claims or professes to be a child of God, but does not believe in visions and prophecies, that person is a liar. He is an infidel. Because You are only expected to listen to the words of God alone. Forget about the words of the president. Forget about the words of a governor. Forget about the words made any noise made by any other thing. These noise constitute what is called entropy. And they do not mean anything to anybody. But listen to the words of God and you will have life there from. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Remember, I want you to listen very carefully and recapitulate your mind to the situation of Samuel. As tiny as Samuel was, he was taken to, to the altar and was made to serve under a high priest. So, service of Eli continued to serve God diligently. But yet Eli had not given any attention to this child because according to him he has two children and highly placed. But considering Samuel, Samuel was too insignificant social wise. But yet Samuel continued to serve God day in day out and grew with the talent of God. But Eli had ne never wanted to use it. And even though Eli 
had not taken Samuel seriously, God had had a purpose of sending him to serve under him, of sending Samuel to serve under him. And then in the course of the service to God, he received a voice one night, and he misconstrued the voice he heard as the voice of his master. And then he went back, called the master, and the master said, I was not the one that called you. Go back and sleep. occurred the second time that Samuel had received the voice of God had heard the call of God he rose up and woke up again and went to the master the second time the master told him he was not the one who called him but yet had the intuition that paradventure it is God who wants to speak to him Samuel and then advised him that go back and sleep again should you receive his voice tell him Speak, O Lord, for thy seven years. But yet added to Samuel that it will be who, who betides you should you fail to tell me exactly what God shall tell you. Now, time to be coming. illustration is brought to you or once again is for you to know or stand now to attach importance to the words of God. Most of you when you are given visions and or prophecies you gallivant, you don't take these things seriously at all. Oftentimes when even you hear even a small child giving you this vision you will say oh what is this small girl doing here? What is this small boy doing here? You will not attach importance to this child. Maybe because you have considered your social disposition. You have considered where you have found yourself. And for that reason you do not believe the words of God. But it is to be emphasized that the words of God is immutable. They remain forever. They can never ever be changed. Whatever God speaks to you is sure to be manifested. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, Now, I want to keep you abreast of what this time which we are contains. And somewhere, I'm a Samuel, the third time, received the voice of God. And as small as he was, God revealed everything to him about what will happen to Israel, the Israelites. And also told him, revealed to him, 
what will happen to Eli and his, the members of his own household, the children. And father explained to him that the children are recalcitrant. And even the father, Eli, had not cautioned the children. And because of the recalcitrance of the children, they will be penalized. And even Eli will not go scot free. And even this, the fact that they were warriors, that they will be defeated by the Philistines. He revealed all these things to Samuel about what will happen to the Israelites and everybody. And he revealed all these things in spite of how smallish Samuel was. to you today that those things you do not attach importance to. These are the things God attached great importance to. For Samuel, who existed and had this revelation, it was not quite long after these revelations were given, these things started to manifest themselves because the Philistines actually defeated them and of course took away the Ark of Covenant of God from them. And when the people were returning from war, and I asked, what about, what, how have my, has my children fared? And he was told that the two children have been consumed by war. And with that shock, he fell and died. If you read the book of Samuel, you will be able to have all this information. And in order to tell you that the words of God are immutable, and at any time God speaks to you, these things are sure to come to pass. So that it does not consist in keeping long beards, it does not consist in your eloquence, it does not consist in whatever thing you want to consider. But that at all times, whenever God speaks to you, these things are sure to come to pass at its due time. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ.
if you should read You will be able to know or hear a particular nomination where it is said that that which shall be used to remember you will be taken away from you. And based on this premise, Eli thought after his days, his two children will take over the throne and will do everything carefully. But yet, they, he had not known the plans of God because God had had a plan because if God had kept those children alive they would have prevented Samuel from ruling and then what happened to these Samuel? How did it come about? The mother Hannah Hannah was age stricken and had no child at all other women were jeering at her and never took her uh, serious and deriding the fact that she was barren but yet as far as, I mean, when she was age stricken, God caused her to conceive of a child. But they never knew the type of child God put into, had put into the womb of Anna. Yet eventually Samuel came to be born and actually ministered in the temple, serving God and doing everything. Even in one of the situations, when she went to the altar to make her entreaties to God, Eli asked her when she was soliloquizing before God. Eli asked her, why do you keep your mouth open? She was only rising in her, in her mind. And then she told Eli, clearly, I was talking, communicating with my God. Because God knew exactly what actually was her problem. Eventually, God answered her prayers and gave unto her Samuel. This is enough to tell you clearly that you should not play for any reason with the words of God. You are fortunate to be called here and you are within the canopy, the citadel of God, within this umbrella. And he keeps telling you everything day in, day out. It behoves on you to believe these things he tells you. Do not play. Those things he tells you today uh, uh, must surely come to pass. Those that have not yet manifested will manifest in future. But realize that whatever God tells you are surely sacrosanct. They must come to pass. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> towards God I see you as idiots because you don't know the important thing you should be doing to attract God's blessing unto yourself what do I say about this issue of tight payments remember Hannah herself she had one child and she decided took on her own volition to allow this child for the service of God in the temple and she never cared that that was the only child she had. But God, in reciprocation of this gesture to Anna, gave her five more children. But what is your own case? 
you will be pampering your children and even forcing them to go to school. That after all, you must be educated before you serve the father. You do not even allow your children to go to school, I mean to serve the father at all. Even the day is when your children feel they should relax at home. You pick up your stripe and you force the student to move to school because you do not want them to serve the father. That is why when I see you, I consider the way you behave. I consider you as being ignorant because you do not make that in the things you are supposed to do to attract God's blessing upon your household. Come back again. You tell me the church is falling from the church. Yeah, you can go get a little You have heard the song sung or rendered by the children of God. That God's ways, the more you look, is the less you see. The thing is true because a lot of things happened to the uh, Philistines. And another to also tell you that God is a two-edged sword. For behold, the Philistines defeated the Israelites and went away with the Ark of Covenants. And yet this had been the Ark of Covenants used by the Israelites to I mean, so that they were able to defeat during the war. Yet when the Philistines also went and overpowered them and took this Ark of Covenants back to their domains, 
There were serious calamities, a lot of people died, pestilences all around. Until one day they went to investigate to know the source or the, co or the cause of death. They were told that the cause of their death was as a result of this Ark of Covenant they, they took from the Israelites. And then they planned surreptitiously to return this Ark of Covenant to the Israelites once again. And that they did when they kept at the bounty of, for the Israelites. What happened again? The following day, in the following morning, an Israelite came and saw the Ark of Covenant being kept or abandoned by the Philistines, took this Ark of Covenant to his own house, and he became very rich and very prosperous for taking this thing there. Now, when the information went to David, who was then the king, David was told that somebody had taken the Ark into his own house and had become prosperous. This Ark eventually, he ordered, organized his troop went to carry this Ark of Covenant from that young man's house. And then when they went, he carried this Ark of Covenant. A young man, for crossing the Ark as they were pulling it along, fell down and died. David was so very happy with his own loin cloth, extolling the pleasure unto God for, him, for this Ark to be returned to them. A woman was up there when he saw David cast a special past insinuation to David and said, what, what is this old man doing? For merely uttering that, she became leprous completely and she was rendered barren. Many other problems arose in order to tell you that whatever God speaks, whatever pronouncement God makes unto you, these things are sure to come to pass. Do not toy with the words of God you hear every day. I do not even know him, because if you say you know him, at that moment you claim you have really known him. At that moment, the knowledge of God runs away from you a hundred miles. But if you follow God or move after him as a foolish person, he will reveal everything to you. I cannot even claim myself that I know him. I cannot claim as such, but that I, what I know is that whatever God speaks, whatever utterances God makes and everything, these things has got to be obeyed. And right from this moment in time, if you have been playing the, with the words of God, play no more with the words of God, for these things are sure to come to pass. So, any young lad, to note today is whatever information, whatever rules of prophecy you receive, whatever form of vision you receive, if you are told that after some years, these and these, a thing will, a thing will happen to you or in your life, believe that no matter how long, no matter how short, these things are sure to come to pass. So I said, I said, I said, I said, Listen with rapt attention as the first lesson is going to be read. First, the first lesson was taken from St. Matthew Gospel, chapter 18, chapter 5, verse 18. For very I say unto you, since heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from this law, shall all be fulfilled. Be the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Brethren, have you heard that? about another situation, in other circumstances, circumstance, Rebecca to conceive of was pregnant and he sought to know the type of child that is or that was in her womb. 
And then she was told that she will deliver of twins. And that the twins symbolize two nations. She was told that two nations are in your womb. And further prophecy was added that the elder shall save the younger. These things were added. Meanwhile, when these things were saved, the child, the children were in the womb of Rebecca. I am a lot of So these things, when you are told, may realize that the words of God are the, I mean, are the truth. And that these, since these things constitute the truth, they are sure to be manifested. If you were to read the publication, Beyond Prejudice, Volumes 1, 2, and 3, scripted together by our brother Asasui Inyahimun, you will realize that all the revelations he received and actually uh, documented them, that all those words, all those uh, visions or prophecies have been made manifest. <laughs> He had 
not only said this thing orally, he had also put these things into writing, pounded the copies, sold them out, gave the people the privilege, and they had the privilege of reading these things. Even though when these revelations were given before me, physically, I did not take him serious. But in the spirit, I knew that all these things will come to pass at its due time. Even though you come before me, and maybe I play, I chuckle with you, but that if it is a prophecy, these things are sure to come to pass. Even at that time these things were saying, a lot of people reacted so negatively about the publication from that brother. But yet I knew that these things will come to pass at its due time. And it has come to pass. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 said this thing before me. I warned him very steadily not to say it. But yet, the professor was very resolute, even before me, and told me, Father, that, okay, since I, I must not talk on the platform of brotherhood, but let me use my own society, eternal sacred order of my children, Asian fraternity, that he will be relaying this message, this revelation he has heard through these auspices. He was very resolute because even though I knew that all the things he said were true, because my own style is this. I compare the situation to somebody, a pupil who is in school or a student in the university or in the secondary school. If you have dogs, you have stolen. Maybe when a particular sum was given to be solved, if you have stolen from somebody, it will be known when a particular teacher calls you to explain how you come by the answer to that sum. It will be explained. When you will not be able to explain yourself, then and then shall it be known that you stole from somebody. But yet, when you will be asked and you are able to explain beyond every reasonable doubt, then and then shall it be confirmed that you actually saw that some yourself. In, the, in this same token, when you ever bring these revelations, prophecies before me, I want to test you to see how resolute you are in your own claim. This is exactly what I did about that case of the professor. He was very resolute. He stood by his own revelation that these things are the truth, that it can never fail to be the truth, and that at its due time, these things shall come to pass. And what have we seen today? These things have actually manifested in your Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In that publication also, he also included that a time shall come when so many people shall excommunicate themselves from brotherhood, shall renounce brotherhood completely, and that if such, an, if, if such ones should, would be asked that they were known to be members of brotherhood, they will deny that they were not members. He actually had written those things in, in those information in that pamphlet. <laughs>
动了。themselves from this fall or will deny the father. These things have come to pass today. A good number have excommunicated themselves. Most the families rise up in concert to warn them against their membership here in this kingdom. It is only recently people have begun putting on their wives to dance freely in, along the streets. Be because before now, people were used to be stoned and people were being abused and one thing and the other were done on people. But a lot of people still stood firm. He added again that between the year 1995 and the year 1997, that all the church denominations shall all be folded up, that it will be one church denomination, and that shall be brought out. He revealed all these things clearly. Now, what is the situation now? A lot of churches are now coming, surrendering to brotherhood. That they do not know what they were doing. That brothers should come and take over everything. This is in order to tell you that whatever God tells you or instructs you to do, do same. If he tells you to go to a particular president, that go same, go and do exactly what you are told. If he tells you, go to a particular commissioner or a governor, go to that person. He, since he is the one that sends you forth, he will move with you. But when you feel you have the prowess in you, you have the strength, you have the social, the, the community, I mean, uh, the connection. And for that reason, you must go. You are bound to be disgraced, for he never sent you forth. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, should I lesson? Brother, let the second lesson be read. Oh, you were meant to. Tell me anyway, you didn't mean I'm funny. Amen. Can I want you? Our second Bible lesson was taken from the Revelation of St. John the Divine, chapter 17, verse 14. They shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them, for, for he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. Feed now, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. When the revelation of the prophecy was given by John, were you yet in existence? Are you able to now know that you will be one of the overcomers, one of those that shall overcome? Are you now able to realize that your name is written in that book of life? It was said again that they shall wage war against the Lamb of God. But yet it was written that they will be defeated, they will be overcome by the Lamb. Have you not seen the manifestation of the revelation which was given? That they shall fight against the Lamb, and they will be defeated by the Lamb. You can see, are you not surprised to find this situation? That in spite of the fact that the whole world has risen in concert to fight against brotherhood, the whole church denominations, the government, even a native doctor, a soothsayer, rises up, and whenever he wants to do anything, his challenges will be against brotherhood. Everybody will be against brotherhood. And are you not surprised to find that at all times, they are always being defeated by brotherhood? 
And even when also some other person accosts you and tells you that why do you ever defend yourself that you are not witchery, that you are not a society? What is it that the Roman Catholic, nobody says anything about, against it, or whatever church denomination, nobody says anything about it? Or even a child will mumble. Even a small child, a baby, the Roman Catholics, the Apostolicans, the members of the Methodists, in the entire Christendom, the Muslims, they are all rising up and chorusing the same thing. That brotherhood is devilish. All their preachings will be centered on brotherhood. But yet, of all these things people do, we are not responsible at all because it was said that they will wage war against the Lamb. It was also added that the Lamb shall overcome them, shall defeat them. This is the manifestation of all those things. And therefore, it's part of whatever effort they will exert to fight against brotherhood, they will continuously be defeated. In the world of Jesus Christ. Amen. A nascent development. It is not a thing that is just occurring. It had happened in the yesterday years. Therefore, if you read the book of Acts, chapter 28, verses 19 through 20, you will be able to realize, see the veracity of this statement we are telling you. What even happened to our Lord Jesus Christ? Our Lord Jesus Christ, this thing happened unto him also, that a lot of people rejected him and actually wanted him to be condemned. And normally, during a certain ceremony, amnesties are usually being granted people, maybe who were incarcerated or put into the prison, and Barabbas was one of them. And Barabbas was a murderer, and then he had committed all these atrocities and was also thrown into the prison. And when it was that time for this amnesty to be granted, the king asked, whom do you want to be released unto you? They said, release unto us Barabbas and crucified Jesus. And he asked them, what evil thing has he done? The echo, the chorus, he must be killed. Even some other people who were at the verge of death, nearing the grave, they were still saying the same thing, that he should be killed. Even though questions were asked, what has he actually done? What evil thing has he done? They never gave anything as answer or response. All they were concerned with was that he should be killed. I
बेटा ये to this truth because a lot of people are not very serious when especially they are asked to move clearly towards the pathways of God. A lot of people will tell you, no, you should be not very steadfast in God's services. Because the thing is compared to this situation, that when you were earthly, when you were a carnal man, when you were sinful, you were held, catapulted to the top. Your fame rose. People held you in high esteem that you were a man of God. That that day you took a decision that you must not do those things sinful. That you should save God. Right from that moment, various names will be called you. People will be casting aspersions on you. This is, uh, this is corroborated from 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12. Where it is said that let a man wallow in one act of evil concupiscence and the other, he will be held by a whole as being a man of God. But right from the day he chooses to save God, everything will be against him, people will be calling him names, doing several things. For that reason, a lot of people are very skeptical, are very nervous about being the practitioners or upholders of this truth. It is also written in the book of Luke. Chapter 5, verse 37. That these things are very true. 39, verse 39, as was said by our Lord Jesus Christ. So that you will be able to realize that a lot of people are not interested in practicing this truth anymore. Because if when they were in the world, people respected them, regarded them. But right from when they called it or turned new leaves to serve the Father, a lot of people are now calling them names. For that reason, you see a lot of people not being steadfast here in this kingdom. And when you ask them, why have you not come? Such a person will tell you, you should continue to go. Because you do not want, of course, to be called by negative names. You do not want to appreciate. Yeah. 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 John.
then you can see that these things are happening unto you because these things were for a four times written about you. That is why the book of Luke chapter 16, no, John. John chapter 16 verses 2 to 3, you will be told, you will be able to read that the worldly people, when they carry out one atrocious act on you, they will be concluding that they are saving God, carrying out or killing you, maiming you. It is because they do not know me, neither do they know the Father. The truth is that a lot of people do not know. But at any moment in time, right from the day you were called into Brotherhood of the Cross and Star, various names will be attached unto you. You will be called a Dracula, you will be called a native doctor, whatever name that will be able to bring you down, your reputation down, these names will be given to you at all times. Even if it should be the president who is called today by the Father into this kingdom, the whole family will rise in concert to warn him never to come in here. Should it even also be the Queen Elizabeth of England, who is also lucky to be called into this kingdom, the whole family will reject her, will renounce her, because she has also come to be identified here. Because according to them, when you see here, you are, they will do not see any man of any mean importance unto them. And therefore they feel, oh, they are not doing anything serious here. So the truth is that whatever you are experiencing here, whatever you are seeing here, these things happen unto you as a result of the things that were written about you. Because it was said of the scripture that heavens and earth will pass away, but not an infinitesimal writing in the scripture that shall fail to be made manifest. And therefore what we are seeing today is that these things are coming to pass as they were written about. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ. There is absolutely nobody who does not have the desire, the zeal to follow our Lord Jesus Christ. But then the other way is this. What if he does not call you? He, will he imbue you with the power, the strength, the potentiality to withstand the vicissitudes of life? Otherwise, you will be extirpated. And this fact is true that because he is the king of kings and the lord of lords, that is why nobody has any power over him. Nothing has any power or authority over him. Amen. And therefore he defeats them. He wins over them at all times. And then he assures, any other person who follows me will also be made to win the world. Amen. And he will have no other problem because these are the faithful and the truthful servants of God. <laughs> or would you want to say, that other person that hates your father and your mother, do you think that person will ever love you? No. no. And then you should read. this ability to remain here in this kingdom up till today if God the Godhead had not come himself 
because even though a lot of people have actually appreciated the virtues that exudes out of brotherhood, but the fact that they are fearing, people might boo at them, might excommunicate them from the, the, the social organization that they might belong. For that reason, they are fearful. Even the wife who appreciates brotherhood can never tell the husband. A lot of people are fear-stricken in order not to be excommunicated, in order not to be exorcised from the community. But yet, because they know at all times, at any moment in time they make their declaration about brotherhood, they will be taken away, banished from the society, and people will not even take anything seriously about them. Right now, the government is rising against brotherhood. Nobody wants to do anything good about brotherhood. Everybody is rising in concert. But yet, the assurance is in the fact that you are with the Father. You are under the canopy of God. And therefore, in spite of whatever perpetration, in spite of whatever machination they might perpetrate against you, you are bound to defeat. And therefore, if you should read the book of Revelation, you will hear about the plans, the predictions made by God unto those who are faithfully serving Him, that you are bound to be protected because He is your Father. People claim that God is not in existence, and they hold very tenaciously to this erroneous claim made by them. As a matter of fact, the publication by our brother Bishop Ayo clearly exposes the stupidity, the ignorance of the world. He had posed a rhetorical question to the people of the world, that now that you are respecting the descent of the Son of God from on high, what when he comes? Where will he fall? Or even when he crash lands, will his enemy not capture him? Will, he, will even his carcass be seen? Or his corpse be seen? Even the, the, a drop of his blood? Those who had actually hated him, will they allow him to, to even be seen? He asked them that question. In order that you will be able to realize that exactly what were written in the yesterday years have come to pass. And therefore we have no problem whatsoever because these things happen as a result of what we're written about, so that the worldly people are now claiming that God is not in existence. And then the question is this, the truth lies in the fact that there is no one from the prophets, those who are sent into this world were killed. Even our Lord Jesus Christ, who came, in spite of all the good works he did, killing the people, raising the dead, and all the things he did, people still found it necessary to kill him then you think that God is so stupid that he would have come the way the world expects he will come? But now he has come nicodemously or surreptitiously into the world. The world has not taken cognizance of him. But yet he is doing his works. But yet he protects and shields his children at all times. He does not allow anything to befall you. This now, the, what you are hearing today gives to you an answer to the problems, whatever is transpiring in the world. Because even in the Muslim world, should you ever claim that you are the son of God, you stand the risk of having to be killed, your neck having to be severed from your body, 
Because according to them, God is not in existence and he has no child at all. A lot of people are holding to this claim that God is not in existence. Now, would God be so stupid that you, he will come the way you all are expecting? So that what you are hearing today gives unto you an answer to all whatever puzzle you had had in your mind about this kingdom. You have heard today I have told you that this is the luckiest generation. Since this is also the end of time, It 
eternity. You are expected to express your joy and thankfulness unto the Father. Because of this singular privilege, he has accorded you and has called you to behold the benefits, the largesses of this kingdom. And as a matter of fact, what we are beholding today, we were have not expected to be beneficiaries of these good things. Even though in the yesteryear, these things are of God even unto our Lord Jesus Christ. Even when he was taken to a pilot, before the pilot, or before pilot, pilot accosted him and he posed to pilot. My kingdom, my glory is not of this world. Have you ever seen any man who everybody rising against him and he has no one person to stand with him, to defend him? Everybody being against him. Peter only demonstrated that fact and picked up the sword and severed the ear of the high priest servant. And then he was warned, reprimanded by our Lord Jesus Christ. But yet the totality of the people in the community never wanted to see him, never wanted to hear anything about him. But yet he continued. In Israel, a lot of people do not even believe the fact about our Lord Jesus Christ. No belief at all. Because according to them, it was written that before the Messiah comes, Elijah shall come before Messiah. And that according to them, Isaiah, I mean, Elijah was translated into heaven. And it was written in the scripture that before the Messiah comes, that Elijah must precede him. But then the question is, did Elijah not come? Who was John the Baptist? Was he not Elijah? He came into the world, but the people did not, did not know him. And also, after a certain moment, the situation of the generation of Noah came, and that world was destroyed through deluge, flood. And after that time, again, people who came in killed, ate fishes, killed animals, and ate. Within that moment in time, God had to send John the Baptist into the world and clearly instructed him that these and these should be your food. Vegetarianism started right from that moment. That John the Baptist came, never ate, never drank, never did anything of that kind, and was a strict vegetarian. He did all these things. So for you to now say, oh, how can one survive without eating fish and meat? But the truth is that any moment you eat fish and any moment you eat uh, meat, these things were not created for you and therefore it does not fall, it is not in consonance to their blood composition as a human being. It destroys you. And therefore these things save as poisonous drop onto your body system. That was why it was given that this shall be for your food from Genesis chapter 1 verse 29. That every tree bearing food, I mean, head bearing tree, shall be a meat, shall, shall serve as a meat. He gave clearly this instruction that this shall be what we will eat. He never told us to eat of the fish or the meat because he wanted us to survive. So that the worldly people do not want to believe. That is why I have told you in this generation that this is the luckiest of all generations. Therefore, right from this moment in time, you should all rise in concert. If it is the elder that has a celebration to undertake, all of you should join. If it is the children of God, the pastors and everybody, join. Shout on top of your own voices because you have seen your father. You have been called to this kingdom. Nothing destroys you. Nothing destabilizes you because you are with the father. This is the kingdom where nothing whatever shakes. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ. And therefore, at this moment in time, when you want to look for a place or a position in this kingdom, you will now be able to deduce and know exactly the position that from these conditions spelled out, whether it is stratified that this is for an elderly person or a senior person, or a senior this and this person in this kingdom, these are not being spelled out. 
But the condition of this kingdom is exactly what we are told today. That you will be persecuted against and all these things will befall you in order to actually qualify you to give you the certificate that qualifies you to be in this kingdom. At this moment in time, let the Golden Test be read. in the process to attempt to boost your ego. Ego or ethnocentrism is not being required here. As a matter of fact, for you to claim that you are a Nigerian does not come into this situation. The only thing that shall come in is that you are a brotherhood. And by virtue of that fact, you are to save a man, a woman, whatever social structure that person occupies. This is exactly what you have got to follow. So that if it is the elders, for example, the elders have had a conference in a quiet state, everybody should join and make noise in the streets 
about the fact that we have seen this God. If it is the bishops, if it is the pastors, the Christ servants, the Christ students, and even the servant children, the women fellowship, join also in concert. Make the noise you have known about this kingdom. Shout on top of your voice, because at this moment in time, nothing at all rears its ugly head. Brethren, the people of old, even though I had the desire to save him, but they were not fully imbued with the ability, the capability to carry out this thing. But in this generation, you are so very lucky, and that he has given you the ability to go to everywhere, all nooks and corners and crannies and everywhere, to spread this good tidings, express this joy which you have known about this kingdom. Because before long, wait and see what will happen within the government circle. Wait and see what will happen within the communities. Wait and see what will happen in the, across the world. There and then shall you know that indeed the Godhead has come to rule over all earth in the blood of Jesus Christ. It is high time we do not theorize, but rather we practicalize the things we hear, the things we are told. We should stand out to practicalize these things at all times. Because you are, since he rules with love, with mercy, with temperance, with humility, and with all other virtues, it behoves on you also to move about with these virtues which you have seen of him at all times. Show this thankfulness, these appreciative hearts unto him at all times. And know full, full well that he has overcome. And since he has overcome, you are also bound to overcome. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And so, brethren, I do not intend to belabor you. It is said the stroke of the king is sufficient to teach the wise. Little so of yes here, may God add blessings to his holy words. Amen. Let thanks and praises be to God in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let thanks and praises be to God in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let thanks and praises be to God now and forevermore. Holy, 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 holy as loving Father. Father, we thank you for thy love and mercy. We thank you, Father, for thy guidance and protection. We thank you for waking thy children up this morning to see the bread in their good health. We say my thanks and praises be to thee in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father, for this gospel you have imparted unto thy children. We pray thee to broaden our intellect. Let this gospel penetrate into our hearts and give us the ability to put this gospel into practice so that we be not only hearers but also doers of thy word and so that all be well with thy children now and forevermore. Amen. Thanks and praises be to thee in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let thanks and praises be to thee in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 